as I read the New Testament, I fell in love with Jesus. Didn't you? I liked him. I liked what he was like. I liked the things he did. I liked the things he said. Didn't you like those things? I thought that stuff was hot. I liked it when he multiplied the bread. Did you like that one? Huh? How about it? Did you like that? And the fishes, you know, the sardines. I always picture sardines. I like that stuff. I like all that stuff, you know? I liked it when he went by the fig tree and said, hmm, you know? <laughs> and it died. Can you picture him doing that? I like all that stuff. I like it. I remember last night, come forth. That's a biggie, you know? I mean, that's hot. There are not many guys doing that come forth thing, you know, telling anybody to come up from the dead. I liked all that stuff. And when I became a Christian, I thought that's what I was going to do. I spent several weeks reading the New Testament and talking with these people, and I thought, this is great. You know, I'm going to join up. I want to do this stuff. And so I remember the frustration of attending church the first few times. You know what I thought they did at church? Now, this is how stupid I was. I thought you, that people gathered at the church, had a good time together, sort of divvied up the land, and everybody went out and healed a few and cast out a few demons and won a few people to Christ before lunch. And so the first few times I went to church, I went prepared with the idea that we're going to, you know, ha, I'm going to take Anaheim. I want to go to Anaheim, you know the deepest, darkest pagan Anaheim over there by Disneyland. That's where I want to go because that's where I was raised. And when they didn't do it, I was disappointed. And I remember one day asking a guy about it. I said, well, when do we go out and do it? He said, what? I said, when do we go out and do it? He says, oh, you don't have to do it. You just have to believe it was done once. <laughs> now that's pathetic. <laughs> Isn't it? I found out over the next year or two that we cried about it, we sang about it, we preached about it, we prayed over it, we gave to it, but we never did it. <laughs> we never got to go do the things that Jesus did. And I grew disillusioned in the process. Now, you know, when I worked for the devil, he let me do his stuff. Did he let you do his stuff? He let me do his stuff. But when I came to work for Jesus, they didn't want to let me do his stuff. And I, to tell you the truth, I joined up to do the stuff. Did you? You see, it's doing the stuff that's going to change the world. It's not knowing it was done once. It's not knowing that it's important. It's doing it that's going to change the world. Somewhere, someplace, somebody's got to start believing this book and acting on it. And I figure it might as well be us. We're qualified. We can read and write, most of us. And we understand that it can be done. And here comes this guy walking along, and he's got one of these signs, like an Eat at Joe's type of sign, you know, front and back. And on the front it said, I am a fool for Christ. And on the back it said, whose fool are you? Well, when I saw it at the time, I thought, oh, weird religious weirdo, you know, he went by. But here I am, all these years later, I'm kneeling on my friend's living room floor. I'm sobbing. I'm suddenly realized that I'm making a complete fool of myself. And I, said, and I remember that thing. I thought, that's it. That's it. I'm going to be his fool. That's it. And I resolved in my heart at that moment that from that point out, I was going to do the foolish thing in the eyes of the world. I didn't know it was going to be the foolish thing in the eyes of the church, too. <laughs> But I determined that night that if Christ was worth coming to at all, he was worth coming all the way with. Amen. And so I got up from there and I met a fool ever since, wherever I could be, in every way that I could. But my heart's intent has always been to be his fool. Well, from that point on, you, you would think it would get easy, but it got weirder. Over the next few years, I was incorporated in the church 
as I, as I was, I was constantly witnessing and sharing with my friends. Hundreds of people came to Christ. We filled this little church up, and it, there, there was harmony at one level. I mean, the people were lovely people. I want you to know that. But they just didn't know how to relate to these newcomers. They were not homogenous with them. They didn't relate well to them. The newcomers had a different lifestyle. They had a different value system. You know, I, I thought we were supposed to catch them and that we'd all clean them together. I didn't know that they wanted them cleaned before I brought them home to church. <laughs> but over a period of time, that became evident. And there was tension over that all the time. And I remember one day, a, a lovely lady, one that I had a lot of respect for, but had, had grown up in that church. One day, she stood at the back door of the church, tears running down her face, her chin trembling, and she was just violently angry with me. And she said, you've ruined my church. And I looked at her and I thought, that's the truth. We've really messed your church up. And I, and I stood there and I started crying with her and I put my arms around her and, and I said, I really love you. And I, I said, I, I feel your pain. I, I, I understand your confusion. But I said, what can I do? You people took me in. You embraced me. And could I leave the rest of them out there dying and going to hell? I had to tell them about Jesus. I had to tell them what you'd given me. And she said, I know, I know. It's just that change is so hard. It's so hard. And we wept together that day. 